Well, Victory's here, and I'm going to tackle two questions I get asked the most in my comment sections. Where do I get my raw cards I submit for grading? And what percentage of those raw cards I buy are actually gradable? So in this video, I'll answer those questions by detailing my process, my buying process, and showing examples of purchases. All right. I currently buy most of my raw cards on eBay. I prefer buying from those big consigners on eBay like Probstein, DC Sports 87, TNT North, PC Sports Cards, Big Boyd Sports Cards, uh, sellers like that. Uh, because you know you're actually going to receive the cards. It's the absolute worst when you buy from a lower feedback seller and they never ship the card. You never receive it. They just upload the dreaded tracking number that shows just that a label has been created and two weeks go by no movement i just hate that so much no replies back from the seller and you're pretty much screwed you're not going to get your item and you have to open an ebay case to get your money back all right i also buy from com c check out my cards uh i buy from local card shops and local smaller card shows from time to time I used to do a lot more card shows every month. I would go and spend lots of money, but I just, with kids, I just don't have the, the time, unfortunately. Uh, but let's focus on eBay because that's my main source. Uh, and I can't stress this enough. Use a sniping service. You will win the cards for cheaper, and it's so convenient. I use Easy Sniper. You just create a login, link your eBay login info to it, and your eBay watch list will be ready on their site. I pay like $10 a month for the service, but there are free sniping options out there. So what I like about these big eBay consignment sellers is that they have thousands of auctions ending nearly every night, every evening. So it's a great way to buy lots of items and save on with combined shipping. All right, so after I pack my kids lunch and drop them off to school, that's when I finally get to work. I get to work probably solid from like 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, my work my work day consists of either listing items on eBay, uh, prepping cards for grading, shipping cards out, making YouTube content, uh, and buying cards on eBay which is what we were we are talking about right now. So all what I mentioned is definitely fun for me, except maybe shipping out the items, but that's, that's why I love my job and I, I love my work. Um, that's why I'm passionate about it. And I'm very grateful for that. And uh, buying cards online is no different. It's, it's fun. It's really fun. It's like being at a card show from the comfort of your own home. Uh, you know, each day I literally hop back into bed, uh, turn on a heating pad, lay on the heating pad because my neck is bad from nearly 20 years of being at the desk sorting through cards and prepping cards. A uh, quick word of advice is that you need to take kind of stretch breaks um, while you go through cards for hours. Otherwise, you get old and your body starts hurting. So now on your phone, pull up the eBay app. Pull up the auctions ending for a big consigner of your choice um, and start going through, start scrolling down through each auction ending that night for the seller. Simply click on the heart next to the photo that saves it in your watch list to all the, for all the items you are interested in sniping. No joke, this could probably take a couple hours two or three hours to go through each one if the seller has thousands of auctions ending that night but uh, honestly like i said it's fun you're literally laying down relaxing hoping to win sports cards i, I you can't complain about that uh all right so what cards i look for i look for cards that have great eye appeal inserts proven players low serial numbered cards autographs hall of famers future potential hall of famers cards with nice designs parallels prisms color matches fan favorite players or just overall desirable players that you think would sell well uh to be honest i don't worry about the condition of the cards believe it or not 
Uh, for cards, I think that will sell for over 25 bucks. Then I'll click on the listing and actually look at the pictures front and back. But for anything under $25, I just click the heart and snipe. Uh, the thing is, is that I'll be putting in probably 400 snipes and bidding really low on each one. Except for the ones I really, really want, then I'll put in a bigger uh, bid. But I'm assuming I'll win, what, 10 to 20% of the items. And I, I honestly don't want to win every one or else I'd go broke. So what I'm saying is that the items you actually end up winning each night, you are getting them for such a great deal that even if they arrive to you ungradable or flawed, you still can make money selling those cards raw on check out my cards or a card show or wherever you want. Okay, so all right. When you finally finish scrolling through each item ending for that day for the seller, go ahead and get your ass back out of bed and head to your PC. On your PC, jump on the sniping service. All of those eBay items you just hearted will be there waiting for you to plug in the value you want to bid on each item. Uh, you know, I probably do this process three to four times a week with different sellers or the same seller. I wish I could do it every day with every seller, but that's not time possible or financially feasible. Uh, all right, so now I will show you some actual examples of this with three different orders I purchased and I received the cards and I go through each one to see what percentage is gradable and what percentage I received are flawed. Okay, so I got this stack from a pretty big seller on eBay, Sports and Source 75. 41 items, I think it's been a total of around 200 to $220 on this entire stack. So we're talking about averages about five bucks per card. Uh, not a big name, but I think it's numbered out of 10. We'll go through them quickly and then I will um, quickly take them out and see which ones are gradable. And then we'll look at the percentage of what percent gem mint did I receive? What percent damage? That kind of stuff. Gino Atkins, Damar Hamlin. We all know him from the injury. I'm so glad he's healthy. Vince Young. Logan Hall, LaMelo, Scotty Barnes, Silver, Jamal Lono numbered, Westbrook, I love the way these 2013 Prism Silver shine. Uh, Lively, we got some low number TJ Ford, I like that year, the LeBron year, number out of 100. Low numbered Harden, some Shaq inserts, Horford color match, low numbered Westbrook, Mojo, Westbrook, Westbrook, Mojo number out of 25, a gold Shaq choice, Juwan Howard. Uh, all these, this is a platinum, all these would sell pretty well if they get 9s and 10s. So I'm excited to see which ones are gradable. Then we're at 25. Here's a second year LeBron. Here's a 2006 Chrome LeBron. And I love 2000 refractors, 2000s. This is 2007, I believe, or 8. I think it's 2008. Uh, these ones are the orange numbered out of 499. All of them. I have the Rashid's cool. I'm excited about that. I hope some of them are clean. Junior Seahow, Terry McLaurin, low numbered. Marvin, this is a sneaky card. Look who's image right there. Anytime you have the goat uh, on with another player, that card sells pretty well. Najee and a Mike Conley. All right, so let me go through these and we'll go create a gem stack. See which ones are are good. All right, they're all in there. New penny sleeves, all clean. Um, I think I actually did pretty well on this order that I bought. So these are the flawed, non-gradable cards that I will send off to Com C. Um, so if I, when I say non-gradable, I mean PSA 8s or below. Uh, fortunately, that JaVale had a huge line on it. And a lot of factory imperfections on the LeBron. And a lot of dings on these platinum choices. So, in total, there were 17 out of the 41 cards were ungradable. And that is around 41%. Here's the, the OKs, the maybes, like the mint nines that I just hang on to. That won't grade right away. That one I might grade right away because of the LeBron. But these were okay condition. Scotty Barnes, LaMelo. And here, 
are the gems. These Topps Chrome Orange Refractors saved me. They saved my butt. Uh, they were so clean. Not one surface scratch centered up. The Lamarcus looked great. And doesn't mean I'll grade all of these. I mean, eventually, maybe down the road. But I will grade the bigger names. The Rashid, I will grade. Um, not these ones, not that one. The Ben Wallace, I will grade. Um, and the Mojo, the Westbrooks look great. That one I'll probably grade right away. It's number out of 25. These ones I'll probably hold off, but they look good. The Horford I'll hold off. That Westbrook I'll grade just because I love that set, and it looked gem. I love it. Won't grade him. Probably won't grade Vince Young right away. Um, this is a great looking card, though. Uh, maybe the McLaurin because it's numbered out of 13, and it was nice. So there you go. About 41% in gem 10s, 41 in duds, and about 17, 18 in okays. So pretty well. Let's go to the next example of purchases. All right, this is an example of one of my DC Sports 87 purchases. I think there's about 24 cards here. 22 of them are raw. I spent about $560 on this stack, but the majority of it was the Luca Silver Prism Rookie. Uh, it's just doesn't it just seem like an iconic card? I, I'm so shocked that the prices are still so low. I know it's mass produced. Everyone has one. Um, but I, I think he'll go down as one of the greatest to play the game. And he has a nice world market. Um, you know, he's, he's a pretty flashy player. And I, I, I don't know. I think the, still the future is bright for him. So uh, these are going for probably around 400 right now. I bought this one for 415 I paid up a little bit because I like the centering and it just looks sharp. So um, that is the big chunk of this $560. So let's subtract that and just the 22, the rest of the cards equals out to I paid about, paid about $6 for them, give or take. So I'll just go through them. This Ray Allen is low numbered, I believe numbered out of 100. Where is that numbering? It's got to be right there. Chris Bosch, this is low numbered out of 50, I believe. This Bibby out of 25. More Ray Allen, low numbered out of 99. CD Lamb, select die cut. Anthony Richardson, portal. I like the look of these and the design of these portals. I got the College Uni. And it's the silver, at least. Anthony Richardson's. Steph Curry, I love that. For some reason, I like the NBA logo right there. It's a cool looking card. Uh, Paul George, low numbered. Kawhi Monopoly, low numbered. We got a Cade York. I, I mean, I'm sure not going to grade it, but I'll. It was so cheap, probably like two bucks that I'll throw it on. Calm C. Uh, Caitlin Clark, uh, you know, look at this design. It's that Bowman Chrome 2007 look. I love it. It's got the X Fractor. She is an amazing player. Uh, Justin Fields, it's got to be numbered out of what, 100? Yeah. His rookie year. House, numbered out of 10. 10 out of 10. Santonio San Holmes just had some amazing catches in his career. Numbered out of 50. Gold Refractor. Justin Upton. He had a solid career, and it's numbered out of 50. These ones, you know, you're not going to grade. Uh, let's see if I have any more. Um, but they're so low numbered. They're like $3. Uh, numbered out of 5. Autograph. This one's numbered out of 10. I don't know. I'll just throw them on Calm Z for double or triple what i paid i think it'll sell over time richard jefferson these are numbered out of 199 orange refractor more low numbered ray allen's really cool optic joe montana i like the design it's low numbered maybe at a 60 65 somewhere in there Jalen carter's silver was like a buck or two and the cd lamb laser it looked clean didn't it okay so and then an albert Pujol slab which i'll just sell on on my ebay store so the Luca I'm gonna hang on to. That'll just be my PC for years and years. Um, okay, so I will do it normally. Take these out, put them in fresh, clean penny sleeves, and we'll see the percentage that are gradable, non-gradable, and in the in between. Okay. Okay, here they are in their clean penny sleeves. I went through them. This stack is the non-gradable flawed cards. Uh, overall, I think I did pretty well on this order and no major flaws on any of the cards. This one just had corner, a little bit of corner white showing. And this card is just completely condition sensitive, chipping all over. But it, it actually looks pretty good for what the set is. The Paul George was off center top to bottom. The Kawhi Leonard was off center top to bottom. Thinner on the top on this time. 
And the Justin Fields, this card is known to have chipping, especially on the back. There's a lot of chipping on the corners, uh, stuff like that. Overall, it wasn't bad. It looked like an 8. The Santonio Holmes, unfortunately, was just a little too far off center. Um, you can see it if you flip it, how thin it is there. And then compared to the right, uh, it was just borderline eight, between 8 and a 9. If I thought it would get a 9, I would go ahead and grade it. But the Upton had some surface scratches. And this one had some surface scratches. It doesn't matter. Even if this was a gem 10, I still would have put it on Calm C because, you know, no one needs a graded Dylan Howard card. Same with that one. Uh, so there you go. That's the non-graded. There's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine out of 22 were not gradable. So that equaled about 41% not gradable cards. Um, the in-betweens that look like nines to me, um, that I'll hold on to were five out of the 22. So that's about 23%. Uh, this one, just a few very light surface scratches. This one's just a little bit off centered. This one had just one little kind of refractor line, a little white showing on the back corners there. And the CD land was just barely too thin on the bottom and the top. Uh, still gradable though. Um, these ones look great. I'm really excited about them. So there's about eight of them. Eight out of 22 equals about 36%. Look like Gem Mint 10s to me. The Mike Bibby look great. The CD Lamb. The Portals, really fresh looking. This one is is like the baseball autos. <laughs> um, I won't go. I won't grade it. Um, but I just wanted to show you that it was Gem Mint, surprisingly. So I'll still <laughs> throw this because of the player. I'll throw it at Com C in that stack. Caitlin Clark looked amazing. I'm really excited about that, especially I think I spent about 20 bucks on it. Uh, the house looked great. I probably won't grade that one, but the Montana looked great. So the uh, what I'll put into the urgent grade box is probably the Lamb, the Richardson, the Caitlin, and the Montana. Maybe the Bibby. And out of these, mm, probably just the CD Lamb. So those are the cards... That will go into my urgent grade box. The CD Lamb, the Bibby, Montana, Caitlin. There you go. That was the DC-87. Okay, now let's look at one of my typical check out my cards, Calm C purchases. Um, so this stack, I ended up spending $575 on total. I know that sounds bad, but the majority of it came from these two top two cards. So let's hope they're at least mint nine. I'm really hoping. Um, and also, it's not as bad because that 575 isn't cash that came out of my pocket at the current time. It's, uh, you know, when you sell your cards on Calm C, it's essentially like trading. So you just build up credit and you can use that credit when you sell your cards to buy other cards on that site. So I, I rarely cash out, honestly, if when I have money, when I sell my cards on Comp C, I just put it back into other cards on Comp C that interest me and hopefully will grade. All right, so let's just go look at them real quick. So like I said, $575 on this stack. Um, I can't wait to get them out and see if they're gradable. This Jewel on Bead, I think I spent like 100 And uh, I splurged on this Scotty Pippen. It's a, it looks a little more off-centered left to right than I hoped for looks more in person than in the, the scans. So I don't know. I'm hopefully it's still within a nine range. If it's flawless, other than that centering, I think it still has a shot. So I'm going to look that up. The Carl Malone I'll need for my black refractor set. So hopefully it's a mint nine or better. Some Mike Evans, some Buster Posey. I like those in Fuego Silvers. Some Tony Gonzo, 2012 Prisms, Mercedes Lewis, Vernon Davis. I like the look of those awesome powers. Um, who we got? We got Scott Rowland and A-Rod. And the stained glass look. I love the look of it. I'm not a huge Carl Malone guy, but that's okay. Mark Ingram, some Cabrera and Fuego, Kershaw and Fuego, some more awesome powers. Bagwell and Manny Ramirez. Um, we got some silver... Tyron, the Honey Badger, some On Card, Mike Evans. I hope that's gradable. And we got some DiVincenzo. He's been killing it for the Knicks. Um, some Fletcher Cox. <laughs> so a lot of people don't know. This is actually Brock Purdy's dad. He did play. Look at that unibrow. Nice effort, Brock Purdy dad. Sean Purdy. 
he played like pretty much minor league baseball. So this is one of his minor league cards. It's kind of cool. I just thought it'd be a fun pickup. Buster Posey. Um, we got more Scott Rowland. And Jared Allen Green. I'm excited about that. Some Elvis Dumerville. I did buy some more Dante DiVincenzo's. Trent McDuffie had a good Super Bowl. Good year for the Chiefs. Kyle Hampton, good year for the, the Ravens. Chipper Jones. Some more Mercedes Lewis. Uh, we got a cool Neek. Uh, refractor. These ones are numbered pretty low, actually. Maybe at a 289, I believe. Uh, some DeRozan. You know, I love these two. Some three silvers, the Prisms, and the Russell Westbrook. Westbrook. I think these were like 16, 17 bucks each. I don't know. They just figured worth it. Already slabbed up. All right. So now what I'll do, what I normally do, go through these, and we'll find out the percentage that is gradable and that is not, and that is somewhere in between. All right. Here we go. Okay, here they are in their new clean penny sleeve homes. This stack, unfortunately, is the flawed stack. And there were about 10 of them. So 10 out of the 31 raw cards in the whole order puts it at about 32% were flawed. You can kind of see, look at that edge. I couldn't see it on the scan. These awesome powers are so condition sensitive. And then look at that dimple. That is a crater. Um, surface scratches all over this Hamilton. Um, we got an edge ding to the top of this Jared Allen. More of that ripply weird goodness on the awesome powers rolling. Surface scratches all over the Posey. Surface scratches all over the Fletcher. The DiVincenzo wasn't that bad. It just has that typical autograph wear, you know, on the back corners and stuff. So I don't know. It could have maybe pulled a nine, but still not worth it to me. And disappointed on the Dominique Wilkins. It has all those surface scratches. See all those? They're not even surface scratches. That's just kind of like... Sometimes when you peeled off the coating, it looked like that. <laughs> Sucks, because this is a really cool card. That 289, low numbered. I think that card would get an 8 with all those. So, I could just sell it raw. Alright, this stack was the um was the in between so at least it's around about like a mint nine i would say although now that i see it see all the top of there on the bagwell so minus that one <laughs> these are in the in between um that malone actually looked good a little off centered obviously but it looked like at least a mint nine so i will grade that one for my set and this mike evans the raw bgs9 looked pretty good outside shot at a 10 off to center left to, or uh, top to bottom off center a little bit but i don't know it does have a shot it's gradable i would grade it uh, a few very light surface scratches on the tyron a few little light marks on the mercedes uh the divincenzo was flawless other than this back corner see that touch of white yeah it's a bummer and then um <laughs> that's pretty like pretty good but i'm not gonna grade that um i would say this order overall was kind of neutral if not a little bit of a loss because my big cards my big raw cards didn't hit um the scotty pippen i was hoping would be flawless uh surface wise but it had some marks to it little surface scratches that you can see a little bit off centered and the back was just a few dings to the corners just very light dings it just didn't look clean clean so my guess it would grade an eight Still kind of worth grading as an 8. Ah, cool card. And then bead. You hear me talk about the back so many times. I still think this would grade a mint 9. But the... I love the color match, by the way. The red, white, and blue. But the red, white, and blue jersey. The front. Flawless. Pristine. Amazing. And then you get to the back, and it has one of those little marks that just make me so mad. See it right... Right there. Um, other than that, the card is perfect. I think it could sneak by by a 9. Definitely an SGC 9. I think I could get a PSA 9 on this. I don't know. Depends how lenient. But the card, other than that, was just amazing. So, I kind of missed on the bigger ones. The, uh, in-betweens were around 29% of the order. And the gem mints. Nice, solid stack. There was about, well, I don't know, 12 cards. So about 38% of the order looked gem mint. Um, but they weren't the huge cards I wanted, but they were okay. The Kershaw looked amazing. The Sinfuego, I was happy about that. 
the Miguel Cabrera look good. The Ingram, the Malone actually look pretty good. The A-Rod, see? Nothing on the top like the others, so that's a good sign. Vernon Davis, Mercedes, the Buster Posey look good. This is mm, this is pretty close. This is in between 9 and 10. It, it could have been a 10. Um, see the chipper? Looks pretty good on the top. Trent McDuffie and the Elvis Dumerville. So of these cards, the ones I would grade, then I usually split up the gem mint tens into two boxes. One is like a urgent grade box that I uh, will grade right away. The other one I'll set aside and grade at a later date. Um, the urgent, I would put the Kershaw in the urgent. I put the Malone in the urgent. Mm, and the Mike Evans. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe the Posey, but probably not. Uh, I'm not that in a hurry to do the awesome powers. So, so out of this order, these ones I would grade right away with the Embiid and probably the Pippin and the Mike Evans and the Carl Malone. So those are the ones I would grade right away. Put into the urgent grade box. Okay. Hope you enjoyed my little Comp C order review. Okay, now that you've watched those examples, I would say overall about 50% of the cards I buy on eBay are flawed in some way and not considered gradable. Uh, I'd say overall 30% are gradable, uh, possible gems, and 20%, the remaining 20% are somewhere in between, you know, solid mint nines or very nice eight copies. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed a little glimpse into my buying raw cards life and that it can help in some way. Uh, all right, so I'll have some more PSA sub reveals coming at you next week. So I hope you enjoy those. Thanks for watching.